Toyota. Let's go places. 105.3 KMTX, Harry Connick Jr. letting it snow, letting it snow. Got some of that going on out there right now. 12 before 9 on the wake up call. It's Keith flying solo. Hey, a big thank you to uh, everybody who donated to the Toys for Tots campaign to help out the U.S. Marine Corps and the Salvation Army. Uh, many, many thanks from everybody, and thanks to you. Many kids will have a much merrier Christmas because of you. And by the way, final count for the high school competition they had going at both McDonald's. Helena High versus Capitol High, uh, 110 toys total, 67 from Helena High, and uh, 43 from Capitol High. So thanks again everyone that donated a toy or two to Toys for Tots. The uh, Salvation Army thanks you, as does the U.S. Marine Corps. And by the way, if you texted in for our Silver Star State Company gift card, we're going to be selecting a winner here shortly. Thanks for all your texts, and I uh, hope you're the lucky winner of our Stocking Stuffer gift card from Silver Star. Rock on. Nice. I know the story, but nobody else does. Like, how how did you end up in Montana? Well, worked in radio for, you know, 34 years and been all over the country. Part of the business is kind of like being in a military family in a lot of respects. You know, you go from market to market where the opportunities are. Um, I've worked for small companies, worked for big companies from the East Coast to the West Coast, from California to Providence, Rhode Island, down to Savannah, Georgia, uh, and uh, Las Vegas, which is where I spent my longest part of my career, 14 years there, pretty much. And, uh, you know, sometimes circumstances open up better opportunities in other places to do something different or move up. And, um, and then sometimes they don't go well when big companies buy you and let people go, you know, and, uh, when that happened the last time, you know, applied around the country and the Montana opportunity came up and I had never been to Montana. So I came up here and fell in love with the place after visiting and was like, wow, this is amazing. And uh, I didn't know there was a hockey team here until I got here and met you out at the fairgrounds in that one summer. Saw you out there with the mascot and I think you were doing preseason ticket sales or something with jerseys. I was like, there's a hockey team here? <laughs> And you were like, what do you know about hockey? And I'm like, well, let me tell you. You know, I could skate before I could walk. You know, I grew up in a hockey family. My dad was a coach, was a, was a great college player. I was drafted by the Bruins and tried out with the Bruins when he was 18 years old. And uh, I grew up on ice. I lived on the ice. You know, I've skated in rinks all over North America, mostly in the East and in Canada. And I played in Europe for a year after I got out of high school when I was an exchange student. So. Got to experience a lot of great hockey, meet a lot of cool people. And uh, it was, you know, when I ran into you and you had mentioned there's an opportunity, I said, yeah, I can do that. So how did you get into <clears throat> calling hockey games and, and all that? Like, what, how Calling that hockey, I did, I did, I mean, I got, into, I got into the broadcasting business to be a sportscaster originally. I did sports in college, and you know, as a kid, I used to, uh, I used to be the PA announcer at uh, the ice arena for a couple college teams, and sometimes when there was amateur games, if they needed somebody, I got a kick out of doing the PA part. And at home, you know, I had a little tape recorder, and uh, I used to turn down the TV, and you know, growing up watching the old original six, and then the expan early expansion, and you know, being a big. Bruins fan all the years to turn down the TV and pull out the mic and and just call the game <laughs> much to the laughter of my parents sure you know, my mom says she still has a cassette somewhere that if I ever become super famous she's gonna release <laughs> I'm like no <laughs> well once this gets out there <laughs> <You know? laughs> tell her to get tell her to start finding it uh. yeah then I did it in college and you know, it was, it was a lot of fun. I PA'd, you know, at uh, minor league team games and stuff. And it's just, it was just a tough business, you know, being a play-by-play -play guy or a color guy. There's only so many teams in any sport. So it's always a tough nut to crack, you know. I did TV sports for a while thinking I was going to get into it. Started as part-time because full-time guy was there forever. Usually the sports guys don't go very far, you know. And I did both. I did radio to make a living, TV to kind of get my foot in. And 
you know, did TV sports, did radio high school football, high school basketball, and uh, there was no high school hockey then in Arizona, so. Um, and it just, you know, it kind of kind of went from there. All right, I'm gonna do like a rapid fire kind of thing. Three questions, basically, and you just fire away an answer. The NHL is expanding, right? Yep. We're looking at Seattle. Is that a good move or a bad move? I think it's a great move. I've long wondered why Seattle, an ideal place for a franchise, didn't have one. Now, I know there's minor league teams up there, and I understand, you know, you got Tacoma, you got Portland, you know, but Vancouver's right up the street. And you go down the coast, you got San Jose, you got the Kings. Sticking with pro hockey. Um, fighting or no fighting? What's your stance? Uh, it's always kind of been part of the game. I don't think they'll ever be able to eliminate it. It's It's been cut back drastically over the years just because they've got, the, the referees have gotten on top of things. They've got on top of the, the sticks a little bit more. Um, you know, the bruisers that used to come out and uh, be the enforcers. You don't really have that anymore. Teams can't afford that anymore. They gotta have a full 18 player lineup of guys that can play. No longer there are guys that are just there for one purpose and one purpose only. And let's face it, there were guys that that's what their job was. You know, they were to come out and protect the star guys and, you know, rough things up, shake things up a bit. You know, it's a necessary part of the game. Um, you know, it's unfortunate when big brawls break out. But, you know, to, to say yay or nay, obviously the game's much better when there's not fights. It's more exciting and it adds a lot to it. But it's understandable when stuff happens. And there's a lot of people that don't understand that. You know, why is this the only sport? And, you know, the penalties have gone up in the years for being involved in altercations. So, you know, players have come to the fact you can't do it your team any good when you're sitting in the sin bin. Switching to local hockey now. What's, uh, if you can pick a, a moment in Bighorn's history that you've been here for and have called and everything else. Is there certain games or moments that the team's gone through that's, that stick there, out in your mind? There have been a bunch of games. Playoff games uh, when I first started. Uh, games against the Great Falls Americans, always exciting. Um, games against Yellowstone and Gillette a couple years ago in the playoffs when it came down the end of the year. I mean, the intensity, the excitement, I mean, you can, it's palpable when you're sitting up there in the booth. Every year, um, there's always several games, usually towards the end of the year, because I think people, the players sense the urgency. It's like, okay, here's the big push, you know? And, uh, but Great Falls, it, it never disappoints. Last one, I know I said three, I'm gonna sneak in a fourth. Sure. So, um, what would your prediction be for the big ones this year? How are, we, how are we gonna finish? I think the big ones have a great shot for Number one, they're going to get in the playoffs, and I, and, I, and I think they've got some good matchups. I haven't seen Yellowstone yet this year in any of the games, but, I mean, Great Falls, we've beaten them twice, and we beat them twice in a row, first time in who knows how long, and uh, they have generally been the big rivals. Um, and, you know, Bozeman's down this year from last year. Missoula's not as good as they were last year. Uh, the Bighorns have improved drastically. Bob's done a great job, got some great kids. Got some really good talent, some speed, some scoring, and you know, we saw a lot of that the other night in the Great Falls game. I mean, that was was pretty intense. Um, they jumped right on it, and um, you know, I, I think we look forward to some exciting games. It'll be interesting to see how they match up in the playoffs. What the playoff format is, whether they open up with Yellowstone or they open up with Great Falls, and you can be sure those are going to be intense series, no matter which way you look at it.